What's up guys, Johnny Sedum here. We're headed out of our home inlet today of Pompano Beach, it's Hillsboro Inlet. And we've got a few special guests with us today. Include, not a special guest, yeah, but including my, my, my good buddy, Chris Dahl. And uh, who do we got with us What's today, up? Chris? Yeah, we got some friends. You might all know this guy. That's Captain Jose. What's up, Jose? What's up, guys? And here are the real, the real special guests. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for getting us out here today. Unbelievable. Yeah. What a morning. What a morning. So we got Chris and we got Sean. And these guys represent Maxell here in the US as well as Tsunami. Probably some other fun stuff. Yeah, too. Bay Outfitters Apparel. Yes, sir. There you go. So we're we're taking them out of Hillsboro. They were down here scouting out Florida shops and Florida fishing. And we were lucky enough to link up with them and spend our first day on the water together today out of our home water. So it is February 3rd, it's winter fishing. We're gonna do our best. We're definitely gonna have some fun. We're just a few guys that decided to pursue our passion as we hit destination fishing spots in our local waters out of Pompano Beach, Florida. We wanna fill you in on what we have learned along the way. There's a level of comfort that comes with fishing out of your home inlet. You know this place, you understand it. Not to mention, we have many coordinates we've collected over the years and endless memories of fish that we've caught in this area. And as the season change, so does the fishing. In the wintertime, the Wahoo bite can get hot and the sailfish move in as well. We like to search depths for the occasional blackfin tuna, and we often see schools of Atlantic Bonito move in. Nice. Nice. If you're from the northern part of the U.S., you might be thinking, why are these guys in shorts and thin UV shirts in wintertime? Well, this is our home, South Florida. We're just blessed with amazing weather almost all year round, and it's rare for us to have to put on a hoodie or a jacket or any sort of warm clothing, and this day is no different. From 150 all the way to 300. We're on them, boys. Let's see what happens. I just dropped down to 220. One drop. <laughs> Chartreuse or green, whichever color you like to say. Chartreuse sounds lime. fancy or lime. I like, I prefer lime. And they hit me on the way down. Dude. Hooked up, baby. They're all the way, 250. Look at the depth counter, guys. <laughs> Listen to Mr. Jose Ramon. Rattle off, baby. Bitches. We went out, we're in about 400 feet, guys. And I found the cuties. We hit a spot that's on our, that fighter that says boom. Boom, chaka On it. We marked and that once upon a time. Marked it a while ago. There's a lot of fish. It's very active. We were actually out here a couple days ago, Christopher Doyle and Will and myself. And wasn't much action out here, but today looks to be uh, But you didn't, you didn't go to boom? That's right, we didn't go to the boom. Yeah, but it looks a lot fishier today. Look, look at that thing, Bobby. We got a lot of action on the screen. On hey, this spot. look at the screen, wow. dude. Drop down, Bob. Very excited. Look at the screen. There's plenty of tuna here. Well, he just got heavier. He's definitely giving me some bouncing. Am I going under the boat? Yeah, let me see. I don't see him. Yeah. I got color, fellas. See what we got. Let's see what we got out here. That looks like. I think we got a. We got a king. No, what is it? Oh, got a fish on deck there. Chris is tied up front. Yeah. yeah. When they're out, when they're too. on top of the water, though, you know, like you can, you can sight cast them. Yeah, this is not my power one most honey. Not a rod I generally use in 400 feet. There we go. All right, we got him up. I think he ate the bottom of my fish. Wild on the wood. Getting wild. Let's see what this fish looks like. Dude, Power One Pro Jigger in 439 feet, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, sir. 
Oh, we got some collar. I got the Atlantic Tenito. That's it. Ah, uh, he's a little big to be uh, flipping. You want me to flip him? Flip him. You ready? Here, let me get the camera. Here we go. Flip them. A little big to flip, but we're gonna flip free them. spool. That's it. Flip back, boys. Nice. Nice. You let's guys let's, wow. Let's talk about this fish. Yeah. All right. Check these boys out. So we just hit a spot. Boom. And um, I believe these are Atlantic Bonitos. And uh, they've got teeth, and Chris is pointing that teeth yeah. right towards me, but yeah, you can kind of see that a little bit close and personal. We love catching these because they're actually got a great table fare. They have a white flesh, and they're not a bonita. You might be, a, you might mistake them for a bonita. Um, where these bonitos are caught are generally out around 375 to 450 feet of water, often near the bottom is where we find these fish. So you got to go a little deeper, drop your jig all the way down, and you might get one of these. Try filleting it, putting it on your on your dinner plate, and you're gonna like it. All right, guys, Chris is tight. The OMX guys, power and speed models. We've got a speed model here. It's not a cast control you see inside. It's more of just a spool tension so that you don't overrun your spool when you're dropping down really slow falling jigs. So a lot of great engineering went into this with Max L. Yes, sir. How's it feel, bro? Super smooth. They're just yeah. like the perfect length handle. You've got nothing but power. Let the rod be a bungee cord. Winch it in. You know, we're using Berkley X9 today, 30 pound test. Super slick, really cuts through the, the water nicely. Right. Right. Right angle. That's why it kind of felt Guys, like I really love your Pro Jiggers. This is a fun rod, man. It really matches up well with these OMXs. Oh, it's absolutely. gonna be a great combo for you fellas in the store. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's already half a dozen or so happy people out there using that reel. What I like about it is the, and why we went with the speed model, is because the speed model does have a slightly lower gear ratio compared to other Others in high the speed reels. Exactly. Which means, even though it's high speed, for the OMX line, and it's got a good 40 inch crank up. We got color. It's got power. We got color. It's like probably another Bonita. I'm getting that uh, vibration. Bonito. Yep. There he is. Bonito, where it is. There he is. He's right there. Ramon, you're up, buddy. Got it. Three school cap. Nice. All right, awesome. Yes, sir. Careful. Fantastic. Fantastic. A ton of fun to get out there and do this with slow pitch stuff. Anybody can do this. Look behind me. Look how close to shore we are. This is a super accessible fishery. It's something everyone can get into, and these guys can set you up with any kind of budget you have. So I right, bring it up, brother. We're gonna send this guy back, all right? We're way too far off. And she gone. So a lot of you have been asking me what boat are we riding in. So I'm going to give you guys just a quick tour of our Dusky 278 Tournament Edition. So here she is. There's Christopher Doyle there in the we front. We are in the bow compartment. Of the boat. So we have one compartment up front here, which is nice that we keep our sea anchor, our regular anchor, um, some additional life jackets and stuff, but and a boogie board and a boogie board. So it's just a nice uh, storage area for us. And then just below that, we got the sea keeper, uh, the sea sucker. We got holders in there. One right? more. Yep compartment that actually has our sea sucker uh, tank holder so whenever we go scuba diving our tank holders are right there and we can put them on uh, next thing is that we really liked about this boat and i think the main reason why we got it was this coffin cooler rigid rigid it's a frigid rigid and it's got a ton of space you can fit a huge fish inside here if you needed to it's got these extra little trays to keep your food up um, off of the ice and you can see we got a couple Atlantic Bonitos in there and um, one thing that we use a lot and I'm going to show you here is sea suckers so instead of having 
our rod holders locked into a certain place and you can't move around. We use these sea suckers right on our core. They have never came free from there. So we've got the ability to add or remove uh, rod holders as we please. But the main thing about this for us is that it keeps it in the center of the boat. And that way we can walk all the way around and freely jig all the way down the boat. And then one extra feature that we added to the front of the console right here is a Simrad Evo, uh, it's a three. SS NSS Evo 3. Yeah. So actually this is the, the newest one that just came out. And then we'll come back here where Captain Jose is and we have another Simrad right there on the front. Um, we do have the uh, Mercury uh, vessel view right there. And then on the back, we've got Chris and Sean here and we've got two uh, twin 200 horsepower Mercury's and then this like super comfortable seat so whenever you're riding if you didn't want to bring the beanbag chairs with you you can kind of lounge right here which makes it really nice and then also up top we've got a couple shotgun rod holders um, we tend to put our gaff up there just kind of ready to go additional rod holders and then we can add the sea sucker here and then we have something that we don't use often we've maybe used it twice and it's actually a live well for um keeping live bait once in a while we'll, we'll put the live bait down that's about it and then we keep that out of the way so we can jig yep we keep it out of the way so we could jig um one more thing so dry storage we got a console here and you can see that we added a corner shelf in order to stack stuff up um, we've got a lot of our gear in here now so it's pretty full yeah. right now but it's pretty clean wiring in here that dusky did um, we're very happy with this boat it rides nicely um, it's got 160 gallon uh, fuel capacity two tanks so one being at 60 gallons and the other one being at 100 so we've got a range that we could get to the Bahamas if we want we could definitely take a, a nice run um, if need be um, and we do multiple trips out of Pompano here without having to fuel up so so guys that's our dusky 278 tournament edition let's go catch some fish i wasn't ready with his pants down i wasn't ready <laughs> oh. uh, bring it up chris let me go and reset again when we're on the Yankee, Captain Greg. All right, guys, reel him up. I'm on the pulpit, so he's, you know, he could stare. Oh, there we go, baby. We're tight, we're tight, boys. Woo! Ah. Hooked up, baby. Oh, he's got a little more weight to him. Come on, now. <laughs> what do you mean that down here the fishing is low? Yes, sir. Oh, well, you know. Oh, well, you know. What do you know? Plugged up, boys. Ah. He's pulling a little drag. A little bigger than the other one. Every time someone says it's time to reel up, that's when I get plugged, right? Whoa. Look at that. He's serious. He's very serious. Guys, take a look at this setup together. That's the Johnny Jigs Pro Jigger Plus Rod. And we've got it matched with the Accurate Valiant 500 end. SPJ edition. So there's two reels that we're just super excited about that we just got into the shop. And this is the, this is one, which is the accurate. And then we also have the OMX from Max L, which is just a smooth operator. And uh, I love Max L because of how smooth they are. You know, and it's something that I fish on the regular, mixed in with my accurates and my dio. So, you know, I really not not a you can't make me pick one or the other because i really love them all but you can see that drag just peeling out on me guys this is an exciting fish boys so i've definitely got a decent amount of drag on the fish as much as i need in the strike position so i don't need to do anything more than just take my time play this fish out People ask us a lot, like, well, can you catch a big fish with these, you know, slow pitch rods? And the answer is, yeah, you can catch anything with these. It's, it's all about your fighting technique. You'll see that 
I'm not putting the, the strain on, on this rod right now. I'm letting the reel do the work. So he's not happy about his situation, I can tell you that, but I'm very happy about his situation. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Yeah. We're talking about me earning my stripes again down here. Do you think I did? I did. <laughs> I can tell you, I'm very happy to have Captain Jose back with us on the boat. He's a dear friend and uh, he puts us on fish and it gives me a second to, you know, just do what I love doing, which is catch fish, you know. I got color, boys. We got deep color. He's coming up our way. Silvery. A little AJ. silver action. African Pompano. Amber Jackie. AJ. We got AJ. Let's see him. Let's see him. Look at that donkey, boys. Oh. Woo! Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Buddy. Nice Brilliant hammer, donkey. Jack. Look at that. He was feisty, man. He was feisty. You know, and this is like equivalent to like the boys out in California catching the um, um, yellowtails. This is kind of like our version of the yellowtail. It's a hard fighting fish. It's a fun fish to fight. I can grab them. It is. By far the most underrated uh, fish in the water as far as cable fare. I know. I know. <laughs> careful, careful. Nice Get him on the deck, boys. That's this it. This would be a bad fish to have your hook going. You know? oh. So, oh, there he is, boys. That is an amber jack. We like to call them uh, reef donkeys out here because it is just a stubborn big fish. And you can see from the dorsal there, it's a little bit shorter than the uh, Almaco jacks. And um, this is a great table fair fish. People like to eat these all the time. Um, we're gonna throw him back today. We've already got some fish in the cooler. We don't need to keep everything, but uh, I am happy to catch this fish. So the tub was fantastic. So we're gonna set him back down. Chris is actually putting the uh, descending tool together so that way we can get him down just to help equalize the pressure on him. Um, we've got to film this. All right, we're descending this AJ. Let's see if this little three pound weight will get him down. Watch that hook, go for it. See you later. Sayonara. Going. In a customary fashion, electric reel. That's it. <laughs> Sometimes, it you know, we've had them to where they just, they don't, they don't Wanna make it down. down. So, so it's, Good to descend them. You know, I want I want another angler to come back and enjoy what I just enjoyed and be able to catch that fish. You look good, Doyle. You want to there we go. That's it, baby. Well, the taste test proved effective. Once again, when we were saying, all right, nothing's going on here, let's move. Yeah. That's right. Always yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. Those are just like magic words. Just throw them out there every once in a while and wait for it. We got some deep color. Get ready for it. I'm on, I'm on, I think, are you on me? That's a jacket. Jacket. Yeah, I am, yeah. The real one. It's for the donkey. Uh. Oh, you got the most. Oh, I know. There we go. Where's John? Alright, so we got a little twist here. Everyone's off on their line. John's gonna clip my leader down low. Thank you, John. And we're gonna get Chris on twisted there. Alright, and I'm gonna go reset. All right guys, so we're back at the dock and uh, we had a great day out there today with um, the boys from Max L as well as Tsunami, Sean and Chris. And uh, I wanna show you guys what this Atlantic Bonito looks like on the inside. So you can see they have teeth, they're part of the mackerel family and you, you cut them up just like you do like a tuna. Go like that, right across the head. And then I like to run right along the spine. I turn my knife 
sideways just like this and just roll right down the spine there. And I don't go too deep so I'm not messing up any flesh. And then I come back the other way right on top of the bones there until you get to the top. Get through the pin bones at the top. Lift up just to here. Go back down and wait till you guys see what this meat looks like on this fish. So it's almost like a kingfish, a little bit. I think it's like a little bit lighter, but but you know it doesn't have that red like a tuna would, and um, definitely a uh, beautiful fish. Um, chances are that I'm gonna put this fish probably. Um, I'll probably cook a little bit of it up. I'll take probably the loins and cook that up. I might take the uh, remainder of it and and uh, smoke it. But um, it's been just an excellent day on the water. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for coming out fishing with us today. Um, without you guys, Johnny Jigs wouldn't be. So we are very grateful. And um, don't forget, we're putting out a few TikToks there. We have a Facebook page. Um, we also have an Instagram. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And most importantly, jig on.